coming to an end. Project Everyman is finished. Got it here on the dyno because we want to figure out what kind of horsepower it's making. That way, if you do the exact same modifications we did, you know kind of a ballpark way of, because every dyno is going to be a little different, but you'll know kind of roughly what kind of horsepower and torque you should be making. The original goal that I set out for was 450 horsepower to the tire, and I'm confident we can probably get there with the modifications that it's got. Again, guys, this is just a stock 302 with a heads came intake package, Vortex supercharger, uh, moderately upgraded fuel system. We know all our baselines, got a good amount of modifications, and also we're running methanol injection, which we'll uh, put that to the test a little bit later. But uh, before we start running the dyno and everything, I want to give a huge shout out to a couple guys that stayed after work and just wanted to share the labor of love with this project here, this Fox body. And I want to bring them in right now. Matt and Jeremy, if you could, please uh, join me in front of the camera here. And um, again, this is Jeremy, this is Matt, and you guys have probably seen them in throughout the video series and stuff like that, but I wanted to give them um, just my huge gratitude and stuff for them staying late, helping out, and pretty much making this become a reality. And um, you guys, you know, uh, we treated this like, you know, a bunch of guys that are just like hanging out, doing stuff on a weekend, you know, in your garage and stuff like that. Um, and we didn't want to make this feel like it was some kind of chore. We didn't want to make it feel like it was real work, even though it was, you know, honestly. But uh, now that this has come to a fruition and everything, how do you guys feel about a project like this? What's your guys' initial thoughts when you think of Project Everyman and what you guys helped accomplish here? With how many weekends or in like late nights we just kind of like did a few hours worth of something, it's it was pretty easy going. We didn't really spend too much time doing all of it all, all at once. So it was really nice to just be able to work on it when we, we had the time. And um, I mean, just seeing it now and the fact that it's all together and it's running kind of makes me tickled to death that mm -hmm. our work is this, I mean, I feel like we got a cool job. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, like he was saying, um, you know, we worked on this during the weekends, sometimes after work. Again, we didn't treat it like a chore, it was a job. We treated it like every, every man, I guess you could say, the whole purpose was that we wanted to, you know, treat this like if it was your guys' car in the garage or at a buddy's shop or something, and you get off of work and you tinker on your project for a few hours and stuff. Now, granted, of course, we have the, uh, you know, the nice uh, addition of having a shop and having lifts and stuff like that. So um, that little, you know, asterisk there, but the same principle applies. And uh, what about you, Matt? When we think of Project Every Man, what we accomplished, what are your thoughts? I mean, everything. Like you said, uh, I mean, we had just a little bit of extra time, do it nights, weekends, things of that nature. Um, yeah, we did have a little bit extra having the shop, but in all reality, all of this stuff can very easily be done mm -hmm. at home. It just made it a little bit quicker for us, a little bit nicer for us, but I mean, even half of the stuff we did up top, I mean, didn't even require That's right. lift at all. So a yeah. um, good portion of the stuff is really just getting in, getting your mm -hmm. hands dirty and... I mean, we had fun doing it. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, from mm -hmm. the video series. And, it's yeah. been a great time. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it really didn't feel, didn't feel like work, you know, because you're actually taking that time to address it pieces at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times when we get trying to set ourselves on a deadline, that's when you start feeling that pressure and then mm -hmm. you yeah. start making mistakes. We too. never force the issue on anything. Um, yeah, if there was like, hey, we feel up to it, let's, you know, work a late night. Because, I mean, reality, they're being kind of modest. We did work some late nights and stuff like that. Uh, a couple, you know, all through the night kind of deals. But it's because we were ready to do it. Um, but at any point, it's like, hey, we need to take a couple weeks off. And we did, you know. It's not one of those things where it's like, okay, we got to, all right, we're here tomorrow. We got to get it done the next day, too. We got to get this done. It's like, no, we didn't treat it like that. And I think, uh, for the most part, people can relate because you'll probably go through that, too, where... You want to tackle something and then step back for a little bit because you don't want to get frustrated with it. We treated it just like an everyman job, an everyman project. And, um, you know, I'm super grateful for these guys that they helped me out. You know, uh, like Matt said, we were in here uh, in the dyno building doing some of the work. Um, we did a lot of work inside the shop and everything. Of course, now it's on the dyno. Um, but again, thank you guys so much um, for making this project a reality. Uh, you guys definitely helped make it go by a lot faster. And of course, like Jeremy said, we had fun with it. You know, we joked around and um, I know that you guys saw some of it in the videos and stuff like that, but we wanted to make this fun. So, yeah. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with some uh, dyno poles. I already got some of the base fueling done and everything from driving it around a little bit. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start doing some poles here and uh, see what kind of power it makes do if we meet that 450 horsepower goal that I had for Project Enemy. So all we're doing is we're taking some uh, generic windshield washer fluid, no additives, just your basic blue stuff. And we're uh, got one gallon of that in our jug here and we're adding three bottles of heat, uh, antifreeze gas tank mixture into that. We're gonna slosh that around and that will be close to our 50-50 water methanol mixture. Is this how you do meth?
We made our 450 horsepower, no problem. And I definitely tuned this on the conservative side. Air fuel was super conservative. Um, timing was super conservative. And we made 450 horsepower and 431 foot-pounds of torque. And that's about 12 and a half pounds of boost. The methanol injection made our air fuel curve super rich, but it did cool down the air intake temps, uh, the air intake temp from the data log under the normal run without methanol. It got up to about 155, not terrible. It is about 84 degrees in the dyno building, so it's not, not the greatest of conditions, a little bit humid. But uh, with the methanol injection, it dropped, it dropped it down to about 125. So that's a 30 degree drop, and I went ahead and added a couple degrees of timing. Whenever it saw that temperature, it would add timing to it. And so that got us up to that uh, uh, 18 degrees timing, but was the super uh, rich air fuel curve. So the horsepower is not much different, and in reality, I probably could have added some more timing. But without making any changes, just adding the methanol, it actually lost a ton of horsepower. We got 410 horsepower to the rear wheels and the air fuel mixture was like in the low tens. And uh, so therefore, that's why you gotta super, be like super mindful, you better tune. Uh, granted, I have the biggest jet in the Mr. Freeze kit in this, so I wanna see exactly what the full bore could do and it definitely worked. Uh, cooling it off, you know, an additional 30 degrees is crazy and the air fuel mixture was just completely rich. Now, the pump gas tune in it is, is fantastic. Again, it made 450 real wheel horsepower, 430 foot pounds of torque. That's fantastic. Super conservative. That means this engine's gonna live a long time. It went through it no problem without a hitch. Um, everything looked great. There was nothing maxing out on anything. Um, it got up to 6,500 RPM, no problem. Obviously there's no real valve flow. It's just pretty much out of steam at that point. If I had more cubic inch in this motor, say if I had maybe uh, a little bit more compression, uh, maybe a 331, 347, it probably would actually continue to make power. Or I could, you know, really cram some timing into it. But again, this is a car that can be enjoyed by anybody. Um, I'm gonna enjoy it. So I really don't wanna just, you know, throw the book at it and try to make the most horsepower possible. 450 real world horsepower is nothing to sneeze at. It's perfectly fine and it's gonna be super fun. Uh, the boost levels and stuff, of course, with the Mr. Freeze, it added a couple pounds of boost. But 12 and a half pounds of boost at that RPM level and the really conservative timing on pump gas, again, about 15 degrees. It's going to live a very long time. Air fuel is like right around that uh, 12, 11, 9, 11, 8 ish, uh, especially when it gets up to that RPM level. So I'm super happy with that. And um, I think this setup here is like absolutely perfect for just your stock 302, which is heads came intake, supercharger, methanol injection. Uh, there would be no need for me to run a front mount intercooler with this system. And in reality, I could probably just put the small jet into the Mr. Freeze system, therefore just making a cooling agent instead of making it a full on like fueling change and stuff like that. But I did save two different tune files in my Terminator X SD card. I got a methanol injection version. That way the fuel map is made for that along with the timing map. And also I have a regular uh, pump gas tune. That way if I'm playing around with methanol, I can easily just switch it over. And then when I'm back to regular driving, regular pump gas with no methanol, I don't want to go lean, just uh, tack it onto the handheld and boom, switch that tune over, it's good to go. So all in all, I'm super happy with this. this the car did absolutely perfect and it made all the pulls without a hitch. And uh, we just had to make some fueling and timing corrections and stuff just to help get it the power that it needed. Uh, we did make some timing changes down low to help get it a little bit more grunt and um, it, it worked great. So um, yeah, Project Everyman was a huge success. Again, I can't thank Matt and Jeremy enough for helping out with the, the project. And I think this is a setup here that anyone can be proud of. It's um, nothing too crazy. Again, no special customization, no special one-off parts or anything along those lines. Everything's off the shelf. Either we carry it or our dealers that we work with carry it. And um, it's something that you can just enjoy for a very long time. And uh, I'm super happy with it. And um, that's pretty much all there is to say about Project Everyman. So as I bring this series to a close, I hope you enjoyed the whole video series. Again, we try to have fun with it. We treated it like a project with some buddies because all in all, Matt and Jeremy are my friends. And even though we work in the same uh, same place, you know, we share the same passion of working on some performance cars. And um, you know, that goes a long way. So I greatly appreciate them. I greatly appreciate everyone for watching the video series here. Uh, Mr. Uh, project Everyman over here is, is finished. Um, it did very well. And uh, 
yeah, uh, that's pretty much all there is for this. I don't foresee there being any other changes for Project Everyman because it's pretty much the build that is that everyone can do. So, hope you enjoyed the video series. There's plenty more to come with Anderson Ford Motorsport. Be sure to like and subscribe and please share the video series with your friends. And if you're interested in any of the parts, if you want to make yourself an Everyman project, again, we carry all this stuff. You know what kind of horsepower you're going to make. And if you're interested, give us a call. Check out the website, www.andersonfordmotorsport.com. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Plenty more to come, and uh, we hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.